Hello, anomalies. Welcome. Welcome to Phenomenal. That's it. We That's have... the whole interview. <laughs> That's the whole intro. <laughs> I, I'm just. I just got thrown <laughs> off. I got thrown off. I got um the the YouTube thing was playing on this screen and then it came in at like three seconds behind me and I just threw oh, my wow. own rhythm off. Look at that. This is this is a the problem was I really haven't let you do the intro for so long that you I forgot know, how to do the intro. <laughs> <laughs> just like why am I hearing you quit one podcast and you forget about how to start them. Jesus. Yeah, Who's who was here with us today, Jake? <laughs> we have Let a great you. guest with us today. <laughs> We've got Laurie Garver back, returning guest to the show. Uh, Laurie, you're kind of doing like a tour here. We were on Main Engine Cutoff uh, a couple weeks ago, which was a great show. And uh, well, you know, once we knew that you had some spare time, we had to get you over here too. So <laughs> that's what I was going to say. People are going to start realizing I don't have that much to do. <laughs> yeah. No, you I guess guys are just really high priority because you are in the sweet spot of uh people who agree with me i think so <laughs> <laughs> a welcome surprise after i fought eric berger last week on the live stream so. <laughs> uh, we're gonna fight yeah. about that too that doesn't yeah, mean we aren't fans that's true that's true Ooh. that's actually Ooh. that's a, a thing that i enjoy thoroughly that we can get spicy about stuff and then be like okay well next topic so yeah. <laughs> Jake and I do that all the time. <laughs> we do. We do do that a lot. <laughs> about a lot of things, it turns out. <laughs> but one thing uh, we don't fight about is drinks. And Lori almost yeah. told us what she was drinking before oh, we started this. because I, I had to work so hard to decide I would drink a beer for you gentlemen. Wow. <laughs> it is called Parkway. <laughs> Parkway. Parkway. That's it? Uh, it's it's a local beer that my husband makes, and so I am here with you. It says Get Bent Man IPA. It's a <laughs> indie pale ale, and I am not usually a beer drinker, but wow. it is local to where we live now in the Shenandoah Valley. So, cheers. That's a yeah. It's a different Parkway than my Parkway, but yes, yeah. Mine mine is the Garden State variety. Yours is the Blue Ridge variety. Yeah. Yeah. That's some Lady local Death, East right. Coast knowledge for you, Jake. <laughs> some mid Atlantic trivia. Yeah. There. I don't, I don't yeah. know what's going on. There. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, dear. Okay, cool. What do you got, Anthony? Uh, so, if you just kept driving up that mountain range a little bit, uh, you would eventually end up near Hershey, PA, uh, where one of the old classics, Jake, lives, which is Trogue's Perpetual IPA. This is a go to. It's a go to day for me. Needed something a little. Delicious. Okay, it's right. 60 degrees. This is a nice uh, warm weather beer. So enjoying my <laughs> warm February. When you led with Hershey, I almost expected you to have some sort of cool chocolate drink or something. But Ugh, no. no. Then I was like, no, Anthony doesn't do that. <laughs> no, I don't do the thick, the thick beers. I'm not into that. No, no, no. Yeah. Hershey's Chocolate uh, World, gotta... though. A real uh, hidden secret out there. So not really a hidden secret at all people just don't know go to hershey it's, called hershey. it's in hershey so <laughs> yeah. like everyone goes to hershey park um, which is the the real thing to go to i've got a black what is this that's, real that's simple. dark yeah. yeah yeah what's in there kalua oh nice i didn't hear what you said no, it was it's a black russian normal very very with plain. some square yeah. ice yeah, so these these are clutch, Larry. These are metal ice cubes. So when I make the drink ten minutes before the show and it sits on my desk, it doesn't water down. You see? If the Russians are good at anything, it's cooling systems. Oh. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> we're going there. That's what we're just, Five minutes in, baby. <laughs> we're just plink. <laughs> anyway, that wasn't on the topic list for the day. That's what led us down the fight last week. So let's let's avoid that one. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well, what we're actually here to talk about, uh, not picking on the Russians, although small pieces of metal. Is that what we're small here to talk piece, about? That fly small pieces of metal. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. I'm going to just keep uh, derailing <laughs> until you can get to the I'm like, official I'm like, try topic. Not to, I'm yeah. trying not to laugh too much here right now. <laughs> Uh, Lori, uh, so we really wanted to get you on because you have been uh, picking up the pace on some some new work with a, a great organization that we're really big fans of, um, Brooke, Owen, Brooke Owens Fellowship. Um, so we had, I'm trying to think, that was August. We had uh, Emily Calandrelli on to talk a little bit about this. That was really fun. And I think that was like right when they were opening up 
the applications for this year's class. And now we're on the other side of it. So we've got uh, a new class that's been picked and you're doing some more work there. So maybe just start off there. Like what, what are you working on? What's going on over at Brooke Owens? Sure. Well, this is uh, a joy of my life for sure. And I have recently sort of re-enlisted in the day-to-day -day work of the fellowship, having been a co-founder in 2016. We are just starting our seventh class of fellows. And as you all oh. know, these are women and gender minorities in the Brooke Owens Fellowship who are recruited from around the world. Uh, we have around 50 a year. This year we have 47 in our class and they, as you are scrolling through there, um, intern at aerospace companies for the summer. We also provide them a senior level executive mentor. They get a, now because we have six classes of alumni, an alumni mentor, and we bring them to Washington, D.C. for a big annual summit. We missed two years, had to do that during COVID virtually, but we'll be back again this year. We were with this um, 22 class last year. So this class makes it, if you can believe it, 300. I think we're at 298 officially wow. of Brooke Owens Fellows so far. And when I, my friend Brooke Owens, passed away in 2016 of cancer at the age of 35. My initial plan, and I sent this little email to people just within 24 hours of uh, hearing that she died saying, you know, we shouldn't let her light go out. And if we could just get five a year, this would, you know, turn into something. And our industry really needs these early career people from different background and uh, so now here we are almost at 300. In addition, there have been other fellowships um, based on this model that have begun and are really successful. Um, the first one that sad to come along because another dear friend, Matthew Isakowitz, passed away the year after Brooke and his family asked if they could use our model to start the Matt Isakowitz Fellowship. And that program has got, I think, nearly 200 now wow. in their sixth year. Um, again, alumni. I think we, it's like the Marines. You know, once you're in one of these, you <laughs> don't get out. Uh, and then Patty Gray Smith, who was the head of commercial space at FAA, uh, a true leader in our field and in the African-American community, passed away actually around the same time as Brooke. And I worked with all three, Matt, Patty, and, and Brooke closely. And so we ha now have a fellowship in Patty's honor. The Patty Gray Smith Fellowship is for black students, collegiate students, and we have the third class, the 2023 class starting this year. So almost a hundred of those so far. Uh, really an exciting thing to work with these young people. Having this come at the same time, really that there is, I think, uh, so much more within the space arena for mm -hmm. people to do and bring in these new ideas and different experiences. Most of them are aerospace engineers, but not all. Most of our fellowships are in engineering, but they, but not all. I noticed we have a journalism one this year with Space News. We oh. also, yeah, mm -hmm. we have some science ones, uh, mostly engineering. And we do the gamut from where everyone pretty much prefers to work. They, they, this is a matching process. It's actually fascinating because we let um, the companies interview people and then the brookies themselves, we call them brookies, are able to rank who they like best. And one-to-one -one matches are like, I ring a bell. And SpaceX, <laughs> SpaceX is the most requested internship, but we now have, um, so many new companies. ABL has got people this year. NASA has one. FAA Commercial Space Office has their first this year. Um, it's it's an amazing thing. So I'm digging into planning the summit. We're doing the Patty and the Brookie Summit together here in DC and got a bunch of fun things in store. Wow. Okay. 
So this is basically, the, I, I'm trying to read between the lines here. The reason you're going back to here is because you just need to get your hands dirty with the with the factory producing these these talented <laughs> people, right? <laughs> You're trying to trying to imprint upon them the Lori Garver way. Is that what's going on here? <laughs> well, I, I uh, do send them all books. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I, I actually sort of wrote the book because every year I was answering these questions uh to you know uh for, from brookies and we'd be here i always have them at my house and we would um just go through so many of of these things and i said you know i really need to write this down um and by the way we have a thousand people applying for these 50 brookie spots and so it isn't just for them you know it's for all these people who now want to be in our community and they wouldn't be wanting to do this if, if we were just doing the same thing as we had been doing, right? So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's I, I think I, I got reinvolved mainly be, because someone had um, uh, had to get off of the executive team because her job got really busy, but I was promoting the book is just like all the podcasts aren't as fun as yours if you can just <laughs> let's just start there we're blurbing that um I'm, I'm, yeah that's exactly. going on the site for sure yeah. uh, i might even make that a t-shirt so and after six after all oh, you could title the podcast yeah. um and after six months you don't really have to invest so much time in that your publicist gets to go away and I do have enough time. I will talk about some of the other things I'm doing, but this is the thing that when I have a minute, I'm going to jump back and say, okay, what crazy thing can I plan for the Brookies? And reading through the applications, interviewing them during the interview process, which is in the fall, calling to let them know they got in. These are, these are all things that you don't generally get out of a, out of a day job. And I'm a, point in my life where I can do it. And I sort of found, and I do say this in the book, I, while I accomplished a lot um, in my NASA career, I'm not willing to say that my NASA career is over, but in my NASA career so far, and the, but nothing will have made as big a difference as doing the fellowship, you know, and now fellowships, because there are these just great minds coming in and everyone is a little ripple in a pond. So it's, mm. it's what we should be doing. And when I was in a position to be a leader at NASA, you leave and you know, there's, there's this aura that is given to you. I'm not even sure I earned it, but people want to hear my stories. People return my calls. I left the field and didn't go into lobbying for some other aerospace company. So the favors that I call in now are all for the brookies <laughs> and the patties. <laughs> and it's like, I really don't get a lot of people turning me down because people want to host, people want to mentor. And so it's, you know, I'm finally, I'm finally calling for a reason that uh, I think people are universally agreeing. This is a positive thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it's an interesting time too, where you know a couple years in now, like the people that were the original brookies are now pl at places full time and moving up the ranks, and companies now know like, oh wow, that person that we took a shot on, you know, so many years ago is like now a key contributor here. So let's get some more of them in here, and it's well, probably a cool yeah, cycle that you start it's getting just into. A, there. There's um, a, it was a real breakthrough because at the time we started this, many of these individuals said they weren't getting the jobs they were interviewing and not being hired. And many of the companies were saying, we just don't get enough applicants, you know? So it's like, okay, well, you can't say that anymore because you get a thousand a year. It's a big and, list, yeah. <laughs> but, but even companies that are taking... Um, Brooke Owens Fellows as interns, we share the list of people who didn't get in, but who were, you know, highly rated and they get jobs too. Um, the, the alumni are pretty special. It's really fun to watch what they're doing. I do, again, in the book, talk about one of them who's at SpaceX and has been um, since. That's not where she interned. She interned at Made in Space. But 
Um, I tell the story in the book, so I won't tell it here, but she uh, is somebody who, I don't know, there's going to be a lot of astronauts from the bookie class. We haven't had our first yet, but counting on her for that. <laughs> At one point, one of the bookies said to me, because, you know, the um, portraits of the deputy administrators and administrators of NASA are in the hall. And she said, I saw your portrait there, but, you know, there's no women on the administrator hall. And I want to be the first female NASA administrator. And I said, well, I hope you get to be a female NASA administrator, but I hope you're not the first one. Because, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, you're 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. You don't want to wait that long. Is your is your portrait? Is it a painted portrait? No, I'm imagining that it's like you had to you had to pose. For so like... you can imagine, I my I got to be true to my brand, and my brand is not that you sit there for a long time and get a thirty thousand dollar portrait painted for you of the taxpayer. It's a cot's that, portrait. <laughs> that is literally what they do for me. And I was like, no. Went to someone who took a picture, and like painted. A that's amazing. It's really nice, though. Yeah. You use yeah. you use the yeah. uh, Lenza AI thing to, to make your portrait. <laughs> yeah, and um, I think it has been the standard ever since. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure <laughs> big at big that, velvet that painting is like ah, we lost a huge contract. <laughs> And yeah, I yeah. went to the Airline huh. Pilots Association after that, you know, and they had the same thing. Their presidents sat for these long painted portraits and the pilot, the Delta captain who had recruited me, wanted me because he was seeking a change agent. And he is the first. And this is from 1930 something when the first airline pilot Since association airlines. president yeah. was. He's the first, he's <laughs> the first union, pilot union. Yeah. That's what it's the measure of, which is pretty interesting how early they were. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, they were, I was going to say, was, that's actually pretty early. It was, yeah. it was really important back then because the companies huh. were making them fly in bad weather and things. And, you know, so they had to band together. But they they stopped with the portraits, too, <laughs> uh, other than the kind where you take the picture. A, I, so I, photos portrait mean. killer yeah. Lori garver portrait killer portrait mode <laughs> just now the thing just let yeah let's get the artists against me now this <laughs> this i'm realizing they're all <laughs> hot and bothered about ai art don't worry about it they're they're on, on a whole nother yeah, culture yeah. worse than yeah, you're small you're change now in the, in the big battle they have they don't care fight, about so. the hallways anymore yeah <laughs> The actual oh, kremlinology uh yeah what yeah i wonder what the kremlin's um, doing these days for portraits they still doing velvet paintings well, we could stand if they had some more to paint, right? Let's get some <laughs> true. new blood over <laughs> My, there. A, yeah. The next guy's got to do digital photography portraits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wanted would spring to ask... for the painting if they would get somebody new. <laughs> we could crowdfund it for Personally. sure. Personally, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, so over like seven years now of, of, of Brooke Owens' classes, where, how are you seeing like things change in terms of uh, like the skill sets you're getting in for the applicants, the skill sets you're matching to employers, what employers are trying to be a part of the program? Like, how are you seeing it change over time compared to the first class? Uh, that's a great question. You know, the first year, it's like so many things now. Boy, I'm glad I don't have to compete with these people. You know, they're just off the charts. And I have a couple of boys who are the age of like the first class and they'd be reviewing uh, applications with me and they'd just be like, oh, we are toast. We would see, <laughs> you know, 5.0 from Yale. Like, oh. <laughs> they started um, taking up velvet painting. They were like, this will be yes. a better a better route for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that has worked out very well for them. The, uh, the class caliber, however, has just, gone up. I mean, it's, it's impossible. We, we really do try not to, we, there will be 4.0 students from an Ivy League school who don't get in. I mean, that's um, just part of what this fellowship is about. And so we like to take a range of students. We uh, typically take, you know, juniors are the sweet spot for where aerospace engineering interns um, 
can be placed. But we take a couple younger, a couple seniors, and we have over time evolved from first the companies were anybody I knew who would take my call. And there were 36 the first year. And now, and, and initially there was nobody like a Boeing or a Lockheed or an Airbus. And our agreement is a page and a half long with the host company for employment. And, you know, they have to pay them a living wage. We say what that'll be and so forth, but that's on them. That's, you know, they're, mm -hmm. theirs to do. So um, over time, Boeing, Lockheed, Airbus all came to us and said, can we host Brookies? And, you know, our first thing is absolutely, we'd love to do it. These have to be special. You know, we want these interns to have a challenge. And by the way, it's a page and a half agreement. Um, the first time, the biggest company we got initially was Airbus and they came back and their lawyers had just bled all over the agreement and it's like no sorry um they, Wait, i was they gonna ask that though because you say a page and a half agreement and i imagine lawyers are bowing are like where's the rest they, fig <laughs> they figured it out they figured it out the first pushback was well you have to agree that you're going to drug test them like no we're not doing that like whatever it is you need as an employer you're gonna have to do um, but they figured it out. And so here, some years in, we, we, we have the Lockheeds and Boeings, uh, as well as um, some companies that weren't even known or, or you know, started seven years ago. I'm yeah. loft yeah. off the top of my head. There's... Um, I don't think ABL was Joby. around back then. ABL probably wasn't, right. Um, and we have a wait list of companies. I This is a really tough thing because if you've got companies willing to hire candidates and we have great students applying um that's why we're up to 47 now but the goal of this is to create a cohort of people who then can bond as a group they have a class and you know this is about the size that we think limit can do that but i'm always trying to think of ways to expand thinking maybe this is a summer fellowship we could do a fall and a spring um, potentially, although aerospace engineering requires you to sort of be in school most of the time, I'm told. So I'm not sure that's <laughs> going to work. But, um, hmm. We have just gotten such support and a couple of big things happened. One is we got one of the contributions that Blue Origin made when they auctioned off that first seat. And I think they gave 10 organizations yeah, a million dollars we we received one of those um we being brooke owens fellowship and patty grace smith fellowship together and then when um dylan went up on blue he made he do, did that you know mm -hmm. buy one give one like for yeah, and yeah, so yeah. we so we received a major request from him and so we now were able to have an employee to help manage some of the you know, back of house stuff. Anyway, it's um, it's evolved in all positive ways. And I'm really, I, I could not have envisioned how, how important this would become, not only for the people themselves, but the community. And for me, it's when I go and I give a talk somewhere and people come up to me who are early career women and gender minorities and they say you know i applied i didn't get in but i felt better just knowing that there was a fellowship out there for this and that this energy around it makes people again feel welcome and the companies are really terrific we have had just a handful of of issues where I've I've had to make a call and say, you know, this was inappropriate behavior or something, but it's very, very um, positive that these hosts want to have these people in their organizations. And they, I, I believe it's 100%, certainly anyone who, uh, I th that got hired afterwards. So you're in your mm -hmm. internship and you're gonna get a job, whether it's yours, um, where you internship or not. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, I get a lot of random requests for 
rookies, can you find me? <laughs> and and I include in that people who've applied because we we do. Brooke was very creative in addition to being a pilot engineer. And so one of our essay prompts, you have to respond with a non-written response. And we get all kinds of things from sculptures to videos. One <laughs> candidate did a dance with a drone. Like, this is just amazing stuff. Like they were dancing with the drone or it was a drone footage a drone, of a dance? <laughs> someone else was driving the drone and it was like a ballet and the drone was wow. her partner. Wow, it was okay. one of the cooler things I've seen. That's some Cirque du Soleil shit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We we need to start uh, interviewing some of these brookies, yeah. Anthony, so that so they can submit our show as their non written. That's what we need to do. <laughs> That'll go well. Yeah. <laughs> Here, that's here's a, me that's a, drinking that's with some dudes on YouTube. <laughs> Lori Garver said this was more fun than the rest of the podcast, so this should count yeah. for something. <laughs> <laughs> These yeah, the drone one. I'm gonna need yeah, to yeah. see some some drone ballet footage. So that would be a good one if we can get the name of the drone ballet footage person. I I have to dig that out myself. All right. Because I don't really fully understand the concept, so <laughs> it might be a thing I need to learn visually more than more than I can imagine it. It's you just gotta remember it's just AI and blockchain, and then AI blockchain. It's a Web yeah. three drone kind of Web three drone. Yeah. <laughs> Machine learning. We brought Machine up AI right. a lot today. But it is the, having a cultural moment, so it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a thing for today. It's mm -hmm. probably gonna last. <laughs> it seems like it's got some legs. <laughs> More than Web three, unfortunately Web for the 3. Web three people. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I was about to take us in a weird this whole thing this week where Launcher got acquired. This is a random Web three side quest. Uh, that company Vast that acquired Launcher was like the Mount Gox founder. Oh really? Yeah. So, this is a that was a bunch of words that wouldn't make a lot of sense to anyone. So okay, all right. We'll just skip that topic. But if you're that out one there, just that, got more, that one if got that more sentence made any sense to you, you just had the reaction Jake had, which is what the hell is going on here? So, and and you can decide for yourself if that makes you more or less excited for what just happened to launch. It's like a planetary resources <laughs> thing all over again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. Hmm. Okay. All right. Yep. Huh. They, right. they well, were a host who isn't anymore. <laughs> I was going to ask about the, if you have a list of those and uh, sure. we can pour one out a little in memoriam and in memoriam of uh, planetary resources be one of them. Yeah. <laughs> RIP. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, what the, so you, you, you talked with Anthony on, on managing cutoff this was last week, the week before. Um, and the, the theme was, upcoming policy what does Lori garber think about you know looking forward rather than looking back at your book um and I, i'm trying to like imagine because this is important now as we're talking about the all these fellowships because these are this is the world that these interns are walking into and they're and they're you know going fresh-faced doe-eyed into a, a workplace that is changing pretty significantly like it is very different than it was even when the fellowship started seven years ago um so I kind of want to talk about a, a few things there, but maybe we'll just kind of kick it off generally like that. Like, how is the the work environment different than when you started, and and what sort of new things do you have to prepare these these students for? Yeah, well, for the I think the biggest change. Uh, well, there's I think it's all positive, but in general. Some of these companies that were startups hadn't had a young female staff before, maybe any female staff at all. So there's a bit of a learning curve there that has, I would say, is improving. And as I mentioned, we've had a generally positive experience, but these are things uh, that it's, it's part of why we did the fellowship so that people would become more accustomed to recognizing um, how you you work in today's world with the workforce of, well, it's today now, we could say it's tomorrow, but um, then there is the type of companies and a bunch of these, as we said, aren't, weren't here before, but I think the work generally is, you know, in the, in the very first year, we always do this thing called a grand challenge because I love grand challenges because it's all about the why. 
So we put out a why statement and we teamed them up in six people in each team. And the why might, the, the, the grand challenge might be to plan a an asteroid. I would put um, a combination of, you, you are supposed to bring to this team the skill set of the company where you're working. So I'd make sure there was a launch company, there was a satellite developer, you know, and, and a policy person. And they, um, now there are companies that I wouldn't have even known how to categorize back um, seven years ago when we started, you know, um, like we said, there wasn't a loft. Um, and I was really think that- <laughs> Mount Gox is still around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we do have CSIS, we have AIA, we have some of Bryce, um, Avicent, sort of the analytical side as well, Maxar. Um, and together now, I think you're you're really getting a representation of how aerospace has changed in that hmm. you aren't either just a launch company or a satellite company there's a lot of it's like all the niches different things now you, you, can you can do yeah. yeah i mean the fact that like this is the first year that there's someone that's in the journalism side is that's an interesting note as well mm -hmm. so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's like the that. one we'll have to have on jake Feels yeah like i was gonna say when the when one you, that would be most interested in for... dealing with our podcast would be somebody that's ready to go right at space news <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say what when you eventually get an applicant that says I want to become a space podcaster, then we can we can we can finally be. Uh... <laughs> we will have made it. <laughs> yeah, they, they can come intern with us. We probably can't fulfill most of that one and a half page agreement, but we can try. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Okay. You have to pay them a living um, wage, for instance. Yeah, that's the real problem for us. Right. Yeah, that's, that's we're struggling at that. Right there, yeah, yeah, we're. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think these metal ice cubes grow on trees? I, mean, you know. <laughs> I was going to say, we should probably get the page and a half for ourselves first and see what we're missing out on, and then uh, we can yeah, yeah. move up the chain. <laughs> you guys get a wage? <laughs> um, Dis Offnom.com slash Discord. Uh, never fly rideshare. <laughs> yeah, 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 never There's fly our, rideshare. So we can well, host a brookie. That, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that is one of the things that's, that changed in the, the first year. Uh, I'm I'm by far the oldest person of the co-founders, but the other two co-founders um, and I put together a you know private Facebook page, and that was how they all met and converse at first. And now. I can't even tell you. You mentioned discourse there on Slack and discourse, and all these, all these things, and I am not keeping up well. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, well, no one need... really is, because one of the big no, ones no. is about to be outlawed or something, and it's a whole. Oh thing, yeah, so, TikTok. Uh, yeah, don't worry about the social networks. <laughs> They're in. A, yeah, one of them, you know, is getting run by Elon Musk in a weird way. So. It's, oh yeah, social networking is in a weird spot. Anyway, they they'll figure it out. Social networking yeah. has jumped the shark, and we have <laughs> This is it. You're it. declaring it. It's over. Yeah, that was the end. But it, but it wow. feels very old to say. Will you send me an email? <laughs> hey man, email. I email I'm coming back sustains. around on email. Yeah, Nobody owns you. email, and it's going to stick around. That's the thing. About yeah. It, so nice. That's a little like pirate that. radio kind of vibe there, Jay. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's where yeah. that's where my vibe is right now. I'm all over yeah. that. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, you know, my publicist had me doing uh, UFA call -in, UFO call in the middle of the night, so I'm I'm with you there. Oh, right. I don't even know. Can you just explain that a little bit? I don't know well, what that. Well, AM what are you AM radio. About? AM You're doing radio, like like UAP like, research. No, there's <laughs> like people calling in who want to talk about a sighting they saw. <laughs> and you were talking to them as this was book outreach that you were doing? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> they buy books, it turns out. <laughs> they, do, they buy books, but I'm just trying to figure and, out you know, the I Venn always... diagram between people doing UFO sightings and space policy. You know, it's I'm here it's for it's it. it. Tom DeLong it... of Blink-182 is here for it, but I think that's probably where the list ends. It came full circle because one of the first agents um, who wanted to represent me, I... I had shared a draft. They said, you got anything on UFOs? Like, no, no, that's not what the book's about. Like, that really sells. And sh and sure enough, even though I didn't write anything about it, they've got me talking. Um, so 
I think of myself as really a straight shooter and they'd be asking like, okay, we got to say, you know, what's NASA hiding? And you just mm. have to play along. Like what's in well, the files? Yeah. If I knew, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we got these I mean, big balloons. That's what we're hiding. <laughs> Well, you must have picked up the the politician skill of just answering any question as the question you want to answer, right? That's the that's the one you got to be able to pick out. Yeah, yeah. I, I think in publishing a book, I finally did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's a great question. What is NASA hiding? And the real answer there is is let's talk about the, yeah. <laughs> what we really should be asking is what are the what is NASA discovering? <laughs> well, and the key is they tell you, you know, don't tell the story. You have to leave them like, yeah, yeah. wanting more. So it's fine to not say and to be yeah. a little leading. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I had one more Brooke question, Brooke Owens question. So just in terms of the companies again, um, you know, we're seeing... I, maybe I should be careful about labeling it like this, but like I feel like we're seeing a little bit of extra churn these days in company kind of like popping up and then going away and, and that kind of thing. Does that affect you at all? Or do you kind of stick to some of the the more stable places to, to put these these brookies? You know, it, it has affected us uh, a couple of times. Um, we had, I think, two interns out in Mojave when who just went bankrupt last the Maston maybe summer Maston at Maston yeah, yeah. um got them placed right away with with others um stealth I don't know if they were ever known as anything but stealth they similarly I think had some and then didn't oh um Paul Allen's company similar mm. so and and if you look at the list, it is not all tried and true. We it's tried and true to the extent that one of the leadership knows it would be a great internship. Right. Um, so it it hasn't happened too much, but it it happens, mm -hmm. and I think that is an interesting part of you know the cycle. Gosh, Ursa Major. Um, I, I had my list, list here. Going. Yeah, I love this. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. The, the yeah. paper sound of like, I, I have so much to sort through, Jake. I can't even give you an answer. That's, that's what this says to me. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's Lone also, Star Lunar. I don't even think I know about that. No. No. That's going in the research know. file. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's Twitter. good here, at least. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we Martians podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been a real. Oh. Yeah. I didn't even acquire that one. I should have. Oh, we should have done that. We should have done an acquisition. Miko uh, should have yeah. acquired We Martians. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and then shut it down. Damn. Yeah, yeah. God, sold man. it for sold it for Web three parts. Yeah. yeah. Keep that in mind when we shut down one of our other projects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Put that on the back burner. Now you're never getting an intern. No. no. Never. Honestly, though, that is an interesting aspect. Like, if if you are somebody who ended up in a situation like that and got a front row seat to something like that happening, well, that's a pretty good space level experience to know what was going yeah. on at a place like that at that time. So that when you're in totally, next situation totally. and your full time job, you're like, oh, I'm picking up, I'm just picking a little scent up here of. Maybe not yep. the best situation that I'm in right now. So, <laughs> yep. you know, and, and, you know, when we're placing, we try to suss out in the interviews what whether you are more suited to a startup or, you mm -hmm. know, something more traditional. Mm -hmm. But um, there's no knowing, really. I mean, some of these people are, are pretty young, so I don't know what I would have even thought of questions like that. But, of course, in my day, they wouldn't have had them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Um, I, I teach a little bit of web development on the side and, and I tell that to some of my students too, because, you know, sometimes they come to me with like, 
oh, I did like some hackathon and it was a disaster. Like it just, I, I have paired up with a group and they were all terrible and we didn't produce anything. Like we literally had nothing to show for it at the end of it. And it was like, it was a complete waste of time. And I was like, no, it was not a complete waste of time. Right. Like, every, everything you do is an experience, whether it's a positive one or a negative one. And I know it's hard to like swallow right now, but like that made you a better developer from having gone through that. Cause now you know all the things not to do, you know? And so there's, yeah, there's gotta be an aspect of that to, you know, being in inside a sinking ship, right? Yeah, you know, I've because um, the last couple of years I wasn't as involved in the day to day and now I have the time I have gone back because of course we survey, we're data geeks too. So we survey everybody after every internship and every summit and you know, who are your best mentors and hosts. And there is no one who has ever said anything like that about their internship, but they're, they're they are very open and we, you know, make these anonymous so we can hear everything. Oh, of course, we could track who went to what, what company, obviously. But um, I think they're very aware that that experience might not be what they wanted every day, but they learned a lot. At one point, uh, I was at a, gosh, how can I do this without just, okay, I'm not going to say the <laughs> organization, but it was a, a, a luncheon and a brookie sitting across from me and a person speaking going on and on and she texts me so is this training for the future of sitting through space conferences where you have zero interest in what is being said while trying to still look attentive valuable that's exactly experience. what this is yep totally valuable experience <laughs> oh <Yeah>. dear <laughs> okay oh that's cool i mean I, I'm, I'm excited i like i said i've um i've got to uh, cross paths with a few brookies and they've always been i always describe them as a force of nature so that's kind of how i see them they're they they exist in my my head canon as forces of nature uh, i'm excited for i'm excited for the first astronaut one now that you said that i'm like oh yeah you're right like seven years that means we're starting to get because if they start as a junior that puts them like yeah we're starting to starting to get into astronaut age here of that first class so yeah. not not quite nasa administrator yet but not Still quite another, NASA administrator. Couple level, more classes before that. Couple more classes yeah. before we've got the NASA administrator. <laughs> yeah, I I think of them as a force of nature as well. And you know, for all of us who, uh, I mean, I, you're around your own kids, but for me, it's just I have learned so much from them. And every mentor tells me the same thing: like they got as much out of the relationship as as the brookie. So it's hmm. very special. Good. Good. Is Lance Bass cool. doing a uh, <laughs> fellowship this year? <laughs> Would be tough for him, given you know. I mean, he college. is encroaching on our podcast beat. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His podcast he... might be able to afford the one one and a half page agreement, though. So we'll see. <laughs> and it's a history <laughs> podcast, right? Yeah, it kind of kicks ass. I was listening to the first two episodes this week. Oh, it's and already it's... out. The first two are out, and it's it's awesome. It's a really good. <laughs> it's it's really good. Well, uh, said he's got book. an amazing surprise. He's got a really good podcast voice. Oh, I mean, as I said in the book, he he's a joy. It was fun. He's fun to be around. We had a whole no Lori Garver mentions yet in the first two episodes. I'm a little oh, bit oh. I'm a little skeptical about that. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> I'm like, am I? Should I pick up? Should I? Should I note that for a reason? But I don't know. <laughs> Well, I had not heard from him since the book, so I, I, I felt it was quite positive, but I don't know. Maybe you took offense. <laughs> Let us know, Lance. Hit us up. I don't think so. I, I don't think so. It, as I said, he did a great job at it, and he sincerely wanted to go. The fact that he's not on Dear Moon is driving me nuts now. <sighs> he should have been on that. That's a Lance Bass situation, if I've ever seen one. It totally is. Totally is. Oh, yeah. Lance is going to find his way into space. But he says in the podcast he doesn't want to go up on a suborbital flight. He only wants um, to go up if someone's going to hire him to do research up there. I'm like, that's a. I like where you're at on that. That's a tough gig. Love the ambition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a tough gig, Lance. Not a lot of hiring going around yeah. right now for uh, about, medical there's research. There's about up there. six of those jobs in the world. So. <laughs> yeah. One of them is Peggy Whitson, and I don't think she's giving it up anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> Like LA, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They seem like they're locked in. Yeah. So maybe if this Tom Cruise thing ever uh, ever actually happens. So are you guys gonna get over that? That it didn't happen? 
Yeah. Didn't, don't you blame Jim Bridenstine for that? Yeah, uh, so, Lori, yeah. yeah, are we going to get over <laughs> the fact that our podcast might have killed the best uh, movie in space deal? I don't know. Maybe maybe <laughs> we'll get over it. Or is it still a thing we should reference occasionally? <laughs> Sorry for us referencing our one scoop that we got. <laughs> I didn't know it was your scoop. It's our scoop. It's our one scoop. Yeah. So the one, yeah. the one time we were ahead of news. Yeah. <laughs> we enjoy our our Jake and I are have very few things where we're like prideful of. One of them is we sometimes are like, is Jeff Faust gonna have to listen to this episode? And if if the answer is <laughs> yes, we're thrilled. That's like our <laughs> that's our meter. <laughs> As right, people know, now. my history with Jeff Faust in my dreams, uh, in which he just called our products a fan blog, and I was like incensed by that. And it's that is a dream that I told him about this once, so it's fine. But yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's our that's our measuring stick. So yeah, yeah. So you don't know no scoops. Uh, I, if you have another scoop on the Tom Cruise thing, that would be that would be huge. We could get our yeah. second Wikipedia footnote, <laughs> maybe third. Last week we learned Eric Berger's birthday, so that should that's be true. our second yeah. footnote. Tom Cruise was not one of the people who we were pursuing in the 90s uh, at that time. The people who were talking about wanting to go um, that I reached out to were Tom Hanks and James Cameron, Mm -hmm. as I say in the book. Hanks said Rita wouldn't let him go until his kids grew up. I think they're grown up now, so maybe we ought to pursue (laughs) that. Um, And Cameron was too tall. Oh, is he tall? He's he's really tall, huh? He's tall. He's tall. I never knew that. Yeah. But he went on this little submarine. Is, is he too he tall could... for too tall for Soyuz? It was Soyuz. No, it was Soyuz. Because oh, okay. see, hmm. that's when I got Fisk Johnson. So that was a scoop that was in the book that I never saw anybody really cover much. Hmm. I guess people don't care about the CEO of SC Johnson Wax, <laughs> a family-owned company that. <laughs> makes cleaning products and an amazing <laughs> array of other things. Now you've got you've now channeled our our vibe on scoops. Look at this. You were, you were giving us shit, and now here you are doing the same thing. <laughs> this is good. So I mean, you've had more than that scoop, but I do. I just quick breaking news. Um, we are uh, uh, quoted here on Wikipedia as, as being the source for Eric Berger's birthday. So well, hang on, why why are we I don't number know. two though? There's a number one. I know one there's there. another what's another what's this about? number one? Oh, uh I don't know. Oh, it we was got, a he must have got a feature from the Houston Chronicle. I don't know. We got scooped on our scoop. <laughs> we got scooped on our scoop. <laughs> That's the worst. Yeah. Do you think it that he likes uh that he's Eric Berger meteorologist, or does he not like that? It's a pretty funny thing, hey. What would you, what would our uh parents thing be here jake podcaster <laughs> probably F- former corporate middle manager is that what mine's gonna say? <laughs> i don't even know what mine is i think uh i have had trouble with mine people say policy analyst that's like wow. that's one way to put it uh, you are you are non-suffix an you are important enough that you do not have a suffix you're just Lori garver you're like a Brazilian uh-huh. soccer player. You're just your name. That's it. <laughs> Sounds like you like that. You're into that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's thrilled. Uh, cool. cool. Uh, well, that was random 10 minutes of this podcast. Yeah, that was a good. That's how I don't know where that going. leaves us. <laughs> <laughs> what else are you working on, Lori? Is there anything else going on besides Brooke Owen stuff? What's, what's happening? What's, what's the Lori Garver calendar look like these days? You know, I am advising a few entities, as you can see on the dust jacket of my book, Escaping Gravity. Plug it. Here, I'll I'll do full screen. (laughs) There it is. Uh, I am, it's called an operating advisor to Bessemer Venture Partners. They're a big venture capital firm and the deep tech team allows me to uh, sit in basically on a whole bunch of really interesting pitches and help evaluate which ones to fund. So I never knew anything about venture capital and that has been a fantastic thing. Um, I am also a, 
senior fellow at Harvard Kennedy School's Belfer Center. And so you will occasionally see me as you will in I think a week and a half in, in Boston teaching, um, guest lecturing. I serve on the board of Hydrosat, which is a great startup company looking at um, the hydrology of plants and how we can help that with uh, they're launching a constellation of thermal imaging satellites. I advise That's the new Sierra, hotness right there. Thermal imaging. That's like yes. the new hotness. The yes, M and Albedo, everyone's getting into that lately. So, <laughs> yeah. Keep you your think. eyes peeled, folks. Web um, That's a scoop right there, Jake. <laughs> and one in the news, while well, they aren't in the news, but Worldview, I'm an advisor for them as well. They are, you know, launching balloons for all kinds of fun purposes. Balloons, baby. Balloon mania yeah. balloons are right so now. hot right now, oh. too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. God, I love balloons. And then maybe to transition into the policy topic debate you had with Eric, um, I'm an advisor to Sierra Space. And so I would say that my views on commercial Leo destinations might might be a little biased so i'm not as ready as you are to to give up on leo and i'm prepared <laughs> to discuss that listen i know you do your homework so you probably heard me say you literally convinced me of this view on i know Nico. <laughs> i i texted so, eric yeah. and i said by the way that was not my argument i didn't say it was like, yours i just say you yeah. convinced me you got me there but you talked it's, me into like oh shit yeah that's so exactly in a what's way, gonna happen i was taking the different yeah. position <laughs> like i don't think the moon should overtake leo um and i hope nasa doesn't get too distracted with the moon because to me leo is still going to give us a lot of potential for um humanity and those 8 billion of us down here and i've been thinking about i mean i don't have any you know i don't have any any more insight than you do and i can see why your takeaway would be oh. we've been in leo all this time and we haven't really come up with this all true and even the experiments in the 1990s that we were trying to do you know didn't haven't yet at least amount to anything, but there's really something true to NASA's saying, you know, we haven't fully run the experiment because we don't have a lab dedicated to this, that the astronauts are really pulled doing different things. We don't have the scientists up there themselves. And I really think the lack of gravity for things like biotech will prove, prove out. I think there will be a market for that, if you think about the hundreds of billions of dollars that go into developing pharmaceuticals and the fact that the uniqueness of how you can test new metabolites on tissues in space compared to in the one eventual 1G here. Um, Listen, man, I'm that's sitting a game in Philadelphia. And we got nothing but pharma in this city. So if that's going to happen, I am here for it because I will find myself... <laughs> right at the center of the space industry as soon as it's happening. Nice. So like, you know, here's my new my new measuring stick uh, to bring this all together. If and when Lance Bass has a job in low Earth orbit, I will have I will do the George W. Bush mission accomplished banner. Like I will reenact <laughs> that scene. I'll go to the Intrepid. I'll hang it up on the command deck. I'll take that picture when Lance Bass has a job in Leo. So this is our new campaign. Us three are going to get Lance, Lance Bass a job. In space. In space. The Lance Bass Fellowship <laughs> is going to be only for commercial astronauts. That's the new, that's the expansion there, Lori. <laughs> but like George Bush's moment on the carrier, it was not uh, It'll be really short necessarily meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, do you know? Okay, it was not so wait, an indicator you, of anything. You referenced our episode with Jim Bridenstine, and the second scoop that we got out of that one was that he was part of that carrier. So he was like his duty was flying the planes off of that carrier so George Bush could take the mission accomplished picture. 
<laughs> which is the best thing in the world. Oh god! And he didn't. He wasn't there for it though, because he had to fly the planes off the deck. It's an amazing, <laughs> amazing moment in time. That's Imagine being like that a, close to a meme. That's mm, like a Forrest Gump kind of moment. Yeah. <laughs> that should totally be in a Forrest Gump movie. <laughs> Except God. Forrest would have been there holding up. He would have still, yeah, he would have got back on the ship. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I and and so if you're thinking about how quickly something like that could happen and how much money would go into it outside of NASA, um, I think it has some legs. Uh but of Pharma's course got the cash. The, Pharma's got the there. cash. Yeah. Right. I see what they're doing around town here. They got the cash. So, mm -hmm. and it's a meaningful thing. I mean, just physically, there's a big differentiator. Um, and so, going to the moon, what are those? And I don't really get the commercial market for the moon before something like like Leo, because there are other materials um, processes that benefit from microgravity as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. my, and my, maybe my we'll favorite. find some for one sixth, but you know, it's maybe yeah. less likely. Moon Advil. My my, my take still is just that it doesn't matter at this point whether we we know for sure if the business cases are going to pan out because like this spending a million dollars a year on supporting commercial deal like it's no brainer of course if the commercial if the private sector is going to throw in the rest let's do it let's go let's see what happens that's a that's a, a no, gamble no I'll brain take with no some brainer other country stack their money yeah <laughs> No brainer. And especially since those first lunar missions, we're not going to be there full time. I mean, leadership in space is still, uh, I think, meaningful in, in Leo, but. I'm here for space stations. I just oscillate wildly on my opinions on the matter. I go from like sink the ISS tomorrow to like build the other half of the ISS back so that we don't have to rely on the Russians to, yeah, let's let's just make a new ISS. To then I'm back Where's to sink the, the ISS gravity, tomorrow. Right? I'm all over the place. Yeah, I'm all over the place. So. You catch me on any I given have, day, I'm uh, like, I'm over it or I'm here for it. I I have that as well. And that's why I so enjoyed that discussion with Eric, knowing that I had seeded this thing in your brain. <laughs> I thought about it all week and then Eric provoked me. So it's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was also fun to, to hear Eric defend the uh, Leo destinations. Meteorologist. He's just a meteorologist based on yeah, Wikipedia. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least he has a name. <laughs> at least he has a Wikipedia. You know, we're still working on that. We're cited a couple times here. We're just working on it. So, we're our, we yeah, have two yeah. campaigns today. Lance Bass needs a job in Leo, and we need Wikipedia pages. That's the. Uh, well, you can yeah. get a link to mine. Get, keep it going. <laughs> the Lance I just Bass got, Fellowship you know, I is what we're going to be in charge of, and then we'll get a Wikipedia page. So. That'd be great. Yeah. I don't know if I can be on as many times as Eric Kerr, then maybe it'll happen. <laughs> Yikes. There it is. Well, right. I guess we'll have to look at the there schedule. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll have to look at the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> and pick some new uh, some new spicy topics to unpack. That's going to be good. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've, I've, caught, I've caught up in the last six months, so that's good. <laughs> You guys, you guys waited a few years to have me on. <laughs> yeah, well, at, I, the mean, have, the mean yeah. time between Lori appearances was gonna, it's going to get smaller and smaller now. So yeah. that's one hundred percent true. Because when you said that you were on in June, I was like, that's not even accurate. You were on like two weeks ago, but it was June. It was June. <laughs> it was totally June. It feels a lot closer. <laughs> I'm sure it feels like not any time has passed at all for you though, because you were on the junket for so long. No, yours was one of the first ones. And and my mom's favorite. Also <laughs> going on the website. That's on the back of the t shirt. <laughs> Lori Garver's Lori mom's, Garver's favorite, mom's podcast. favorite podcast. <laughs> and that one with those two guys. Uh, <laughs> new best moment of the show they know, ever. They, they know so Wait, many I, things. Oh, man. I don't even know. <laughs> She's 92. She's 92. I think we might have to end this podcast also, Jake. Like, this might be the last episode of this show. <laughs> Lori, it's not your you are target audience. honestly the best. You are the best. 100% the best. You so and your mom fun. are so the much best. Fun. Yeah. Gosh, we should have your mom you. on. Yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, <laughs> where do we go from here? Do you have anything to plug? Uh, uh, Not anymore? Join the Discord, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you got to join the Discord. Pop in offnom.com slash Discord. Laurie, if you want to learn how to use Discord, we got a great place for you to try it out. So You would love our um, Discord. I would yeah, yeah. love so, it out. So. We got into like a six to 12 hour argument the other day about whether the space shuttle is a rocket or not. This is the kind of pedantry that we wow. dabble in in our in our uh, Discord. It was well, I was it, not was, there for that. Uh, was there a conclusion? Uh, I, I don't know. It was pretty heated. So I think uh, it, it, I think some lines were drawn and I don't know if there was a lot of a lot of movement on that wedge issue. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is hilarious. Yeah, it it's at good. least part rocket. I mean, <laughs> plus, you know, you have this whole naming thing of the, what is the space shuttle? Is that the whole name? That came up. Exactly. That yeah. came up. <laughs> <laughs> Offnom.com slash Discord. Yeah. Do it. And you should and you should never fly a rideshare so that we can send Lance Bass to space. <laughs> That's hundred percent our, our uh, entire campaign. So <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Lori Garver, uh, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, if people have not checked out the book yet, where should they buy it? Uh, at your local indie bookstore or at Amazon or Barnes and Noble or any, anywhere online. Escaping gravity, or, and you check or out. They're, or they're free in the Capitol Hill libraries because I keep stashing them in those little houses. It's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> and then, of course, yeah, you should check out the uh, other episode with you, Lori, where we talk specifically about books. So we can do the review. Has anyone uh, done planning to look up that episode number so we can plug it? I'm like frantically episode sixty six. It's right in the show now. notes, Jake. It's all 66. good. I've done okay, it. Okay, awesome, yeah. excellent. Episode sixty six uh, with Lori Garver. So check that out. See you later, everybody. Talk to you next week. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.